So this talk is about map time. Quick show of hands, who here is familiar with map time, been to a map time? Amazing, six is more than I expected. Um, so this talk is about, first of all, what map time is, what we, what we did, what we learned doing that, and why it matters. Um, we all are here and have been listening to folks talk about their experiences with open source and community and building community around open source. So some of this is gonna be a little bit redundant, but it's important to reiterate. Um, so what is map time? Um, this is a screenshot actually from a blog post I wrote uh, five and a half years ago. Wow, five and a half years ago. Um, map time is a collection of beginner focused community groups for learning geospatial technology, techniques, and concepts, particularly using open source tools and hands-on practice and exercises. But map time is also an important idea. It shouldn't be so hard to learn, and we have the power to make it easier and teach ourselves in the process. So the uh, origin of this idea was um, a group of people ended up in Mapland, in the geospatial tech industry in early 20 teens, in the early 20 teens, and technical learning from like online at that time it assumed a lot of things about you if you were coming into doing mapping technology. It assumed that you either were coming from GIS or that you had a strong programming background or in most cases both. And for those of us who weren't in that situation, we didn't know where to start or how to learn or what to do, where to come from. So map time was a way to get people together to learn, um, is a way, I should use current present tense. Um, but Map time also exists because community inclusivity and accessibility are important and necessary components of positive learning experiences. The more that we focused on this idea, um, the more we saw it kind of perpetuate. And now, five and a half years later, with some perspective, um, I'm excited to tell you about what we learned and how hopefully you can take those learnings and bring them forward into your communities as well. So how did map time start? Um, map time started with me going to programming meetups in Python and JavaScript in Portland, Oregon, and realizing that nobody else there was doing anything related to maps. Um, they were learning the language, which was very cool and helpful, but they, I would say things like modeling and ArcPy and Leaflet, and they didn't know what I was talking about. And that was isolating, it felt like I was operating in a void and I didn't have people to work with. So um, I met some folks at the Esri User Conference in 2013 who um, told me about a group in San Francisco called Map Time, which was inspired by um, a talk by Alyssa Wright at the State of the Map US Conference in 2013, where she talked about what Miriam talked about yesterday, which is the gender diversity in OpenStreetMap and how there's a high barrier to entry for folks who come from non-traditional underrepresented backgrounds in, that, in tech. Um, so Beth Schechter wanted to create a space where she felt comfortable learning with other people who also wanted to learn and were excited about being around beginners. So I replied to this tweet and I said, uh, I wanna talk to the people who are doing this because I wanna do the same thing in Portland. And then about a month and a half later, um, we had our first map time in Portland, which uh, according to Beth in 2013 was the first map time outside of San Francisco. And at this point there was a map time in Cleveland, Ohio, but they were an existing group that sort of adopted the map time moniker. So. From here, there were two chapters, and then um, it started to grow kind of organically. Um, this is a, a screenshot from, um, a t from the talk video for Beth's talk at State of the Map US 2016 in Seattle, which we'll get to later, but I wanted to make sure to acknowledge uh, Beth, Alan, and Camille, who are the three co-founders with me of what became this big thing that is map time. Um, so this leads us to State of the Map US 2014 in Washington, DC, where we held a birds of a feather session um, about map time. We said, we are doing this thing. If anybody is interested, we would love for folks to come. And uh, 
we, we also did a lightning talk that said, we said, come to our birds of a feather as our call to action. So we got a lot of people to come. And at this point, there were maybe six chapters. We had um, New York, Maine, they were all in the United States. Um, and we, uh, we wanted to see, we heard there was interest, we wanted to see what kind of interest there was. So we showed up in a room, people came and talked about all of the different things that they wanted to do in their own communities. We ended up with a list of 19 communities, including Null Island. There is a map time, Null Island, it's the greatest place on earth. You should probably take a visit. Um, the, uh, so we, we came up with this huge list and um, we had a big discussion about like what makes a good meetup, what makes a good map time, what do we want map time to be, and building that together as a community. Um, one year later, a little over a year later, at State of the Map f 2015, there were 60 map time chapters. Um, and there was so much interest that we ended up having a map time summit, which we called our second annual, um, with this one on, on the left being our first one, and then this was our second annual map time summit. And um, there were folks there from all around the world. Um, and this conference was special because it was at the United Nations building. I think a lot of people came to the State of the Map US that year to hang out in the UN, which was very cool, I will say. Um, but we, in, the, in this talk in 2015, we pitched map time as more than just people getting together to wanting to talk about maps and, and build stuff, but really a, a set of ideals and a philosophy <clears throat> that could be kind of perpetuated moving forward. So I'm gonna talk about that. So this is the map of current, the current map of map times. If you go to the map time uh, GitHub, there's a GeoJSON file that includes all of these. It is automatically generated um, from people who want to start their own chapters. And it's kind of hard to see, so I broke it up into continents. So in the Americas, we obviously have the most um, because we're from the United States and that's where we started. Um, and there's uh, some geospatial autocorrelation as well. I think when people see their neighboring city has a map time, they get, oh, I want to do that. That sounds amazing. So of the 80 plus chapters, I would say 30 are in the US. And then we have a few in South America as well. In Europe is our second largest uh, concentration. Again, with a lot of passion from folks in Berlin and Amsterdam, you can see again that nice spatial autocorrelation, people wanting in the, in the area wanting to do their own map times as well. Um, Africa, plus our special Null Island chapter. Um, Asia, where um, we had some unique interesting challenges. For example, editing OpenStreetMap in China is not a thing that you can really do. So it, changes the dynamic of the group. And then finally, Oceania. There is a map time chapter in Christchurch. <laughs> uh, and um, Melbourne is the most, Christchurch and Melbourne are the two uh, very active map times in this region. So it's already here. You just gotta go find it. Um, so that map includes all the chapters that have ever existed. And that's everything from, hi, I wanna start a map time, and then literally nothing else to groups like Map Time Lexington in Lexington, Kentucky, which had a meeting last week. So these groups, at least, based on a brief Twitter search, are still active today. Um, and you can see, again, most of them are in the United States. I didn't realize that Salzburg had started up again, so that was a fun surprise. Um, and Singapore is an incredibly active chapter as well. And um, one thing that we noticed, too, is that um, a couple of these places, Davis, California, Eugene, Oregon, um, our chapter is built around universities. So a group of folks in a university who are studying geography, GIS, and want to learn things that are not in the curriculum. So when I first started thinking about this talk, I was expecting it to be kind of a, a, fail, a fail con talk, to talk about how we failed. Because that was my idea of how things had gone. I, the organizers, myself, uh, Beth Allen and Camille, stepped back from the organization in 2016 for reasons that I'll, I'll get into. But looking at it from that perspective and seeing that we were once 80 chapters and now there's 15 active chapters, it felt like a failure. It felt like something that um, I should be embarrassed about and I was gonna come up here and talk about how we failed. But we didn't fail at all. 
the process of building this community and seeing it grow and change helped us learn, first of all, the challenges of building learning communities in general, but also how to teach people about maps and geospatial concepts, regardless of their background, regardless of their level of knowledge coming in. And hopefully those ideals are still perpetuated not only in the existing map times, but in communities elsewhere. And my hope today is to share some of those with you so that when you're off building your own communities, whether they're map time or otherwise, that you can um, build something sustainable and make people feel good about learning. So I'm going to mention a few things we learned about teaching and then a few things we learned about building community. So the first most important thing that we learned is that it needs to be okay to be a beginner. When you first learn how to do something new that's technical, new task, it's extremely daunting. You feel stupid. You feel, oh, I should have known that. Oh, why didn't I know that? When you go to, have, has anybody had the experience of going to a beginner tutorial, not understanding the first step and closing the browser window? <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. We all have had that experience because that tutorial assumed certain things about being a beginner and also didn't do a good job of making it okay to say explicitly, you are doing a good job even if you can't figure it out. Even if you walked in today, you learned one new vocabulary word and then you left, that's a success. You learn something new and you're growing and the bar for being successful in learning should not be as high as we've made it. So um, this is a slide of an image that I put at the end of every map time talk I've ever given. Because I think it's important for people to know that you are going to fail over and over and over again, and that's okay. You are going to struggle, and that's okay. And no matter how many times it takes, I believe in you, and I think that you can do it. Of course, if you get discouraged and you want to not do it, that's also fine. But um, so uh, we gave a talk at, at the Map Time Summit in 2015. I gave a talk on building Map Time tutorials. How do you build a tutorial? And this is uh, one of the slides from that talk, which says everyone who came at all, even showed up, did hard work. Maybe that hard work was programming. Maybe it was just like getting over the mental hurdle of being there and being immersed in something they didn't know. But so you have to, as part of your teaching and learning and building community, you have to make sure that people know that it's okay and that they're doing an awesome job. So um, the next thing we learned was about um, that teaching and learning should be reciprocal. And I met a lovely person the other night, Neve, who told me about this uh, uh, Maori concept of ako. And pardon my pronunciation, but um, ako is a dynamic form of learning. It describes a teaching and learning relationship where the educator is also learning from the student in a two-way process and where educators' practices are informed by the latest research and are both deliberate and reflective. It is grounded in the principle of reciprocity and also recognizes that students and their teachers cannot be separated. The, um, that re reciprocal learning moving back and forth uh, in terms of being everybody being on the same level is super important. Uh, because beginners make the best teachers. You, if you, there's a concept of conscious competence. If you know what you know, then you do a better job of explaining it. If you don't know what you know, you end up in a situation where you have an expert explaining something to a layman and uh, using a bunch of vocabulary that that person is not going to necessarily understand. So um, map time is really rooted in the idea of co uh, collaboration, not a person stand, not basically not doing what I'm doing right now, which is standing in front of you lecturing, but uh, collaboratively working. So this, the slide from the tutorial development talk was if someone asks you a question and you don't know the answer, that's great. Someone in the room probably does and you get to give them the opportunity to go from being a student to being a teacher. And a lot of instructors get embarrassed when they don't know something but it's actually a really valuable learning experience. Um, another thing that we learned, kind of our third main point, was that um, hands-on work facilitates learning. A lot of geo meetups at the time were this like lecture listen format or um, leaderless hack nights. And um, the, what we found is that by giving people something directed to work on, 
you get to see firsthand what works, what doesn't work, and also people get the experience, that nice little dopamine hit of like, oh, I did a thing and it worked. Um, and as you can see here, uh, this is an idea that has existed since the beginning. With um, On the left, you see uh, Map Time San Francisco in the old Mapbox office. And then on the right, uh, Map Time Melbourne did a Missing Maps marathon in uh, 2018, so about a year and a half ago. And the, this, these photos of everybody on their computers just oh, brings me such joy. So the more ways that we can show or teach something, the more likely it is that people will be excited and keep learning. So that's what we learned about learning. And here are some, this is like the closest thing to the fail con part of this talk, which is what we learned about community building. Um, we were really excited about all of this energy and we became a roadblock, a bottleneck for that energy. We said, if you wanna start a map time chapter, fill out this form and this form will automatically create a ticket or an issue in the map time admin repository and then it requires human intervention, somebody to come in and, and read it all through and say, yes, awesome, go ahead, start your map time. But there are currently 99 open issues in this repository because as organizational leadership step back, we didn't do a good job of putting someone in place to carry that on. And really what we could have or should have done is um, create, helped people do this themselves. So part of that process was will read your application, quote unquote, and make you a GitHub repository, which is another roadblock. You shouldn't have to understand Git or GitHub or anything about it to start your own meetup. It's a barrier to entry that we created out of fear and wanting to be in control, but it ended up being too difficult and actually stemmed the growth of the organization. Um, second thing we learned is that every community is different and that's a really good thing. We tried at first to be really prescriptive about what a map time should look like, but there are some groups that prefer to have a hack night. There are some groups that prefer to use a lecture format. There are some groups that want to meet at a bar and there are certain groups that want no alcohol at their events. And each map time should have the ability to um, make their own, make their organization what they want it to be. Um, and so, Map time in Minneapolis, St. Paul, for instance, did an event where they, it was all hands-on, they didn't have any computers at all, and they made maps with other materials. So you can see on the left there is a, um, it's not a dodecahedron, it's like a dimaxion map in 3D form. And then they also did this cool string nail thing that probably has a name, but I don't know what it is. Um, so, um, we even realized this in 2015 and didn't necessarily always put it into practice, but um, we, this was from our talk in 2015 about where we had gotten with map time up to that point. And it's important to let communities organize around what they want. Um, so skill levels, you know, if your group is really excited about OpenStreetMap but could not care less about web mapping, doing a how to make a web map is probably not the best idea. Versus if they're really excited about QGIS, then maybe OpenStreetMap Mapathon is not the right call. Um, and then really, really important and something you've heard a bunch of times, I'm sure, is make sure that your organizers don't burn out. We put a lot on our organizers, including ourselves, and ask them to do a lot of different things. Uh, and this is uh, from Beth's talk in 2016 at State of the Map US. And then that talk was called uh, Map Time, Motherhood, and Martyrdom. And it was her announcement that the organizing committee was stepping down and passing on map time to another group of people. And in here, she's actually showing a screenshot of another talk from FOSS4G 2014 about burnout. But this was Beth's slide from that talk. Um, put on your life vest before assisting others. It's really tempting to want to support your community with everything you have, but then you burn out and then your community is relying on you to give you that same level of support and you can't. So speak your truth. Be honest about what you can and can't do. Ask for help, and it's okay to move on. Um, I, there's this term founder syndrome where people get very attached to the idea of a thing that they birthed, you know, that they created. And it's important to be able to let go and let a community survive on its own. So her two pieces of uh, very specific unsolicited advice um, were don't let people burn out by giving them a term limit of being or an organizer and also finding somebody to give you money which is 
hard, as any conference organizer or meetup organizer will tell you, but can make a huge difference. And finally, it might not look how you want it to look or how you imagined it might look, and that's totally okay. Um, and this is true in everything, including in life, looking back and saying like, oh, I thought by this time I would be X, Y, Z. And it's, it's never the way you think it's going to be, and you have to be okay with that and be okay with letting go. And kind of illustrating this concept, I was the other night I was looking online um, to see on YouTube, just to see like what, what types of videos have people put up related to map time. And it turns out that as of March of this year, there were some folks from geo for all who did a webinar about starting a map time in your library and how libraries are a great place to do map time because there are computers there and nobody has to bring their own computer and it makes it more accessible. And it also gets people excited about learning. So that was really cool. I had no idea that existed. And here I am thinking like, oh God, I'm such a failure. Like this is, you know, nothing is happening when it turns out that the community has lived on on its own. So why does this matter? As we learned from Edwin yesterday, it can sometimes take a long time to recognize your dreams, 1998 to now. And long-term sustainable communities require work, but these groups can really change the world. We have successfully changed the idea of what it means to learn about mapping, to learn about technology, to um, build community, and to get everybody involved and excited and engaged, even though we don't have 80 chapters and we're not a 501c3 nonprofit and we literally never raised any money, <laughs> zero dollars the whole time. So imagine what we could do if we were all given this opportunity to succeed and the environment to make mistakes. It sounds like it would be pretty great. And it's fully possible with concentrated earnest effort from organizers and passionate community members, which you all are because you're here and you're listening to me talk about this. And you don't look entirely bored, so I'm assuming that you're at least somewhat excited about it. Um, this is from uh, State of the Map last year. Um, communities are hard, delicate, and wonderful. It's really tempting in technology industry to say, oh, that's a big lift. I don't know if we should do that. It seems like a big lift. What's the incremental change? How can we make a difference? seems too big, we're never gonna get there. Um, but you will, and it may not look like what you wanted it to look like, but it will be valuable in its own way. Um, thank you so much, uh, my name's Lizzie, I live in New York City. Uh, Twitter is probably the best way to get a hold of me, honestly, if you want to. Um, and this is a photo of me eating an entire pizza to my face. Um, <laughs> so thank you so, so much, thank you.